Advanced Hero Quest Gaming Aids. A question of fate revisited. A man's character is his fate. A couple of years ago, we released our first Advanced Hero Quest set of house rules. These dealt with the conundrum of fate points. In this video, we are revisiting this topic with new ideas and a revamped set of heroic skills for your heroes to learn and use during their expeditions. The impetus for all this came from some conversations with one of our subscribers on YouTube and Facebook. We will begin by outlining the fundamental problem with fate points in Advanced Hero Quest and the creation of a god mode for parties of heroes once they have completed a number of expeditions. Next, we will talk about ways of nullifying this problem. And finally, we will offer some rules and ideas, as well as downloadable cards and counters, so that players have something cool to do with their hard-earned fate points, rather than flicking the switch onto god mode. Let us begin. What are fate points? Whenever the players... The heroes, in Advanced Hero Quest, complete an expedition, they get fate points. This mechanic is fairly common in role-playing games, and was especially so during the era that Advanced Hero Quest came out. They are most commonly used to change an unlucky roll of the die, or avoid mortal wounds, or even death. In Advanced Hero Quest, though, they are invariably used to negate combat damage. Heroes can spend a permanent fate point to avoid a death-dealing blow from an enemy completely unscathed. This is fine, but once a party of heroes have a few expeditions under their belt, they effectively have such a store of fate points that they can effectively tank any damage and face off against any enemy without fear or worry. If things go awry, they simply spend one of their many fate points and carry on, effectively playing the game on God mode, immune to any and all enemy damage. Essentially, this isn't that fun. Not for the GM as they watch their carefully crafted dungeon and scenario steamrolled to dust. And then, soon enough for the players too, as they grow bored by a game without risk, whose only reward is yet more fate points to continue on in the same vein. This is a fundamental problem, in my humble opinion. Too much of a good thing is... never a good thing. So, how to address it? In our previous video on this topic, we attempted to answer this, but although we came up with a solution, it was not quite enough. Thus, we want to present the following guidelines to GMs and players in order to more comprehensively address the question of fate. Advanced Rules for Advanced Hero Quest all of the following rules and ideas for addressing the slow build-up of more and more fate points by a experienced party until such a time as they've effectively become unkillable are for veteran players. We would not suggest implementing any of these rules for a party of new players or heroes embarking on a new campaign. Number one. Scaling Damage Negation Costs Our first idea was this. Once a party has completed at least three expeditions, and thus has potentially six fate points per hero, the training wheels need to come off. From here on in, the cost to negate all of the combat damage suffered during a combat phase scales. By which I mean, during any one expedition, 
the first time a hero uses a fate point to negate all of the damage caused by an enemy's attack, it costs a single fate point to do so, as usual. However, if it is the second time the hero has spent a fate point on this action, it costs two. If it is the third time in the expedition, it costs three, and so on. In this way, you are disincentivizing your players from using all of their permanent fate points to simply negate damage. Sacrifice and Reward Many video games have secret areas or levels that reward the most determined of players. As GMs, we can do the same. We can create secret chambers entire sub-levels of a dungeon, or even whole scenarios that offer the heroes a tantalising reward, a powerful weapon, an artefact, say. But there is a cost. In order to access said areas, the heroes must each give up a fate point, a sacrifice, a libation. For example, the heroes must wade through a river of blood to reach the secret area, but Upon entering the foul waters, each must give up a fate point or be swallowed up by the foul stuff. Anything like this will work. The key motif is simply this. Reward the players for using their fate points for anything else apart from simply negating damage over and over and over again. Heroic Skills Our third idea, although not our last, is in the Between Expeditions phase, players with at least five permanent fate points can spend one of these to purchase a heroic skill from the list of 16 that we have created. These skills can be used during expeditions. There is no upper limit to the amount of skills a hero can learn, but only one can be learnt per Between Expeditions phase. These represent the heroes becoming veteran Dungeoneers, and not only growing in weapon skill, bow skill, strength and toughness, but also learning unique skills and tricks to aid them in their quests. The rules governing the process are as follows. Heroic skills can only be bought between expeditions if the player has not spent any gold crowns on a stat increase. A hero must have at least five permanent fate points in order to purchase a heroic skill. Only one skill can be learnt in any between expeditions phase and to learn it, it costs the hero one permanent fate point. Each heroic skill costs a skill point to use during an expedition. Skill points are a new resource. At the start of an expedition, if a hero knows any heroic skills, they generate a skill point for each permanent fate point that they have at the start of said expedition. In order to activate a heroic skill, a hero must spend one of these skill points. Unspent skill points are lost at the end of an expedition. At the start of the next expedition, these skill points are generated once again. In order to keep track of how many skill points you have spent, we have created some counters for you to download for free, cut out and glue together. The Heroic Skill Cards what follows next are the 16 cards that we have created for this system. These are available to download for free in the description of this video. A tooth for a tooth. Activate at the start of a GM phase. For every point of damage taken by a hero, a point of damage is inflicted on an adjacent enemy. Bomb Maker. Activate at the start of a hero player phase. Place a fireball template anywhere within six squares of the hero within line of sight. 
Any models under the fireball template are automatically hit. Roll five damage dice for each affected model. If a hero performs the bomb maker action, they may not make any further actions this phase. Deafening War Cry. Activate during either a hero player combat phase or a GM combat phase. All adjacent models must move away one square from the hero if possible. Any models that cannot suffer one damage. Parry and Disarm. Activate during a Games Master combat phase. Choose an enemy adjacent to the hero. They may not attack this phase. Fieldcraft. Activate at the start of a hero player phase. This action cannot be performed whilst in an enemy's death zone. Heal D4 wounds on either yourself or another friendly adjacent model. If a hero performs the fieldcraft action, they may not make any other action this phase. Frenzied Attack Activate during a hero player combat phase. Roll two extra attack dice when the hero attacks this phase. Hard as nails. Activate at the start of any phase. The hero has toughness 12 for the rest of this phase. Master Caster. Activate during a hero player phase. If the hero is a wizard, they may cast two spells as a single action this phase. Run and Charge Activate during a hero player combat phase. Roll a d12. If the hero makes a move and attack action this phase, they may add the number rolled to their movement characteristic. Savage Strength Activate during a hero player combat phase. The hero rolls an extra 3 damage dice this turn if they score a hit on an enemy. Sharpshooter Activate during a hero player combat phase. When the hero makes a long range attack, they will hit their target on any roll except a fumble. Normal LOS and range rules apply. Smoke and Mirrors Wizard and Elf Heroes only Activate during a hero player phase Remove the hero from play Immediately return them to play on an explored board piece anywhere within 12 squares of their original position Sprint Activate during a hero player phase Double the hero's speed characteristic until the end of the phase Treasure Hunter Activate before rolling on a treasure table. Roll an extra die each time you are called on to roll. Then choose a single die to disregard each time. Whirling Death Activate during a hero player combat phase. When the hero attacks, roll a hit dice for each and every enemy model adjacent to them. No more than two successful hits can be assigned to each opponent. Insane Bravery Activate at the start of any phase. The hero has Bravery 12 for the rest of the phase. All of these cards, as well as the cheat sheets and counters, are available to download. Just look in the description of this video and click on the link. So, finally, what's next? Well, these rules are a few ways to approach the build-up of fate points with your players, but it's far from an exhaustive list. One other idea we have that will require a whole video to itself is the idea of companions. These would be like henchmen, but require fate points to recruit and then coin money to pay for their upkeep subsequently. 
Each would effectively be a mini hero, a sidekick, a Felix to the player's Gotrick, so to speak. However, developing all of this is a whole other can of worms we've yet to open. Watch this space. In the meantime, well, we have uh, rules for Jabberwocks coming, as well as the next part of our campaign for Sven Hammerhelm. But uh, for your games, may the gods bless your dice rolls, and may the fates smile kindly upon you.